All right, so working with those 2D um, panels or design motifs is really fantastic. And you can imagine how if, for instance, you were to take those 2D um, cut files and begin to work with them right, as a folded system, you would be able to explore all of these kind of emergent qualities of the surface that are a byproduct of the relationships that you set up in your parametric system, your paneling system. So this is great, great um, kind of form finding um, process that occurs between the, the kind of folded motif system and then the surface active um, uh, kind of output uh, that is a result. But let's say, for instance, you wanted to try working from the other way around. Let's say you have a 3D element that you've designed and you'd like to figure out how to populate that into a grid, which you would then ultimately uh, unfold those elements um, to be able to reconstruct uh, the surface. Now, they're both very much um, uh, related in terms of the process. It's just that one is actually working from the kind of bottom up where you're you know, exploring the quality of the surface that emerges from the, uh, the pattern uh, that's specified. And the other is really looking at a way to ultimately achieve a desired end result, i.e. a desired um, kind of design component being proliferated um, or populated onto a surface. Now, with the paneling 3D components, you'll notice that the naming convention is very similar. You have PT, you have morph, but instead of 2D, you have 3D. And the PT morph 3D will take an object and actually morph it between two bounding grids. Right? So you're able to do something like this. So let's take a look. Now, because I have a grid in here, I'm going to go ahead and um, delete um, these things. I might actually um, keep my attractor in here, but I'll, I'll just use this file to start the next one. And I'll say save document as. So I have here a collection of points. And here I've worked with um, an attractor. Now this guy's kind of on hold for a moment. This is really just for us to uh, use in a little while. But since we already built it, I like to keep these guys in the, uh, in the, the canvas. And what I want to do is start to look at how to um, work with the design motif that we came up with. Now, it's an import, important to, to remember that um, this element here in 3D does not equal this as an unfolded object. Um, because, you know, obviously, as this moves up in space, these, these uh, control points, um, this point and this point would ultimately have to be moving in towards the center as well uh, to accommodate the fact that there's going to be uh, an angle difference so it has to be taken up by the material um, by shortening its expanse. So this component here, um, as I've chained it like this, if I were to unfold this, it's not going to look like this motif. However, um, this as a designed object, something that I'm interested in, in terms of the qualities of the component and the kind of qualities of, of its proliferation, um, just requires a slightly different workflow. So I'm going to copy my design elements. Uh, I'm just going to move them over here. All right, so I have here my 3D design motif. And the goal is that I want to try to figure out how to begin to populate that motif into a grid. Now, because it is three-dimensional, that means that it is going to need an additional um, grid in order to be able to populate. Otherwise, um, you know, you, you would not be able to, to actually get this guy to to populate in here because there's no other 
um, set of grid for it to understand how to match the uh, top control points. Now, I'm going to go to file and I'm actually going to open up my, uh, my simple guide with the uh, planar grid and copy this into the other file as well. Now we're going to first take a look at this guy. This one's a little bit easier to, to discern um, the, the kind of changes that are happening and to really get your head wrapped around that. Um, whenever this populates, whereas the other one, because it's changing and it's radial, it might be a little bit harder to understand. So let's start with the, the simpler one first. Now, panel 2D, right, right next door, you have panel 3D. And in panel 3D, you have something called morph 3D, as we just said. And you'll notice that there is um, you know, quite a lot going on here in terms of its inputs. Now, GD1, the first grid of points. Two, the second grid. The pattern object, so what is your design motif? The bounding object for the pattern. So what is its bounding box? And then some issues of shifting and offsetting. Now, um, these additional settings right here, this kind of lower five settings, we're not going to really look at um, t today because it's just, you know, there's quite a lot going on there. But uh, just that, you know, to reiterate, we will be doing a follow-up to this webinar, um, which will look at all of the advanced features, um, some of which um, are included here at the bottom. But to get up and running, we really just have to input the grid that we want to use. We need an offset grid, so we've got to figure out how to do that. We need a design motif. So let's bring, bring this object into Grasshopper. We'll do that by using a container for geometry. This will be my 3D design motif. And I'm going to set that object right into this container. Now, we need to know what is its bounding box. So, in order for us to very easily determine what is the bounding box of this object, we need to just use surface primitive bounding box. This is the easiest and fastest way to get this done, so I'll just drop this guy in. And what it will compute is what is the unit space, right, the, the kind of, or actually the enclosing space of this object in both its x, y, and z. It will use this to determine how this object is populated through this grid and the corresponding uh, uh, second grid um, whenever we, we specify that. So I'm going to just drop that bounding box into here. So this is my, my reference box or my bounding box. But now we need a second grid. Now the easiest thing we could do to get up and running is just use a vector in the z direction. And so if we're just moving these points up, we could just say transform, move, and just move our grid. It's really just as simple as that. There we go. Nice. And now we have this object populated. Let me turn off some previews here. Now, if, for instance, I rotate this 180, all right, cool, now we have the underside. And that's as fast as that. If I select this object and I say bake, and just group everything and hit OK, all right, and you can see we have this guy fully populated.
Fantastic.